Hello there, Touch Designer Programmers. Matthew here. So we are on instancing kick these days. We're just doing all sorts of fun instancing kinds of examples. And we're going to dig into another one here. Let's go ahead and add a new component here to our network. Or an, excuse me, a new container. And we'll just toss that down in here and let's dive inside. So what is it that I want to make here today? Well, the thing that I want to make um, takes advantage of some playful ideas here. Uh, and there are a few different ways that we can start to think about what that means and what that's going to look like and, and all of that jazz. And in this particular example, I want to make something that looks like this. I want to start out with something that resembles a full image, gets all jumbled in these like crazy kind of puzzle pieces, and then gets reformed back into the image that it started with. All right. That doesn't seem like it could be that hard, right? So how on earth are we going to do that? Well, let's go ahead uh, and start to think about what this is going to actually end up being. We know that we're going to instance, and we know that we're going to render something in real time, so let's go ahead and add uh, a geo here into our network. Let's add a camera also while we're at it. We'll add a render. Now in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that I don't need any shading to happen. So we're going to dive here inside of our geo. We're going to add a constant. I also happen to know that I want to use a rectangle for my instancing. So we'll add this in here. We'll turn on the display and render flags. For our geo, we'll go ahead and we'll set the path to the material as dot slash. Look inside of me for our constant one. There it is. That's so great. Now, let's start with what happens here with our instances. So we're going to add a base, and we're going to keep all of our instance uh, information here very tidily managed inside of this. We're going to call this instances. Here in our GL, we're going to turn on instancing, and we're going to tell it that it should look at instances slash final, and it's going to tell us, whoa, Whoa there, cowboy, that doesn't exist yet. And that's all right, we're going to make it exist. So let's head here inside of our instances. Let's add a grid, soft. And we happen to know that we're going to take advantage of this particular grid to make that thing happen, right? So let's think about what that means. Just for a hot second, I know that I want this to be mesh. I want it to have a size that's 15 by 8. Oops. Right, it's got this nice uh, long shape to it. And why 15 by 8, you might ask? It's because it's got, um, well, for count 0 as a number, right? It's like 16, 9 as our aspect ratio. We also know that we're going to want 9 by 16. If we go ahead and make this viewer active and hit W, we can see that lo and behold, there we've got perfect squares that show up. That's exactly what we want. Okay. While we're here, let's go ahead and let's add a null. So we'll add a null here into our situation. We've got this null that's going to act as one of our final elements in all of this. We're going to use a SOP2 chop, right? This is going to give us all of our coordinate information that we need to have access to. That's lovely. We're going to go ahead and while we're, we're here, we're going to actually grab a sort chop also. Or excuse me, a sort SOP. We're going to go ahead and leave this bypass, right? We're going to want to create a new fork over here. We're going to plug this into a null. And what we're going to do with this sort is we're actually going to go ahead and ask it to make all of our uh, points random. Okay, well, why do we want that? We're going to see here in one second. Let's go ahead and make another one of these SOP 2s, and we'll convert our random point uh, grid into channel data also. And then we're going to go ahead and make cross. We're going to add a cross chop in here. We'll plug these two in. And the cross chop is going to let us kind of seamlessly move between these two sets of values, right? Which is exactly what we want. We're going to go ahead and add an LFO also. We're going to use our LFO here to instead of 
being in this configuration, we're going to ask it for square. Perfect. Goes on, off, on, off. We're going to turn this frequency way down to say it's uh, not 0.1. Let's go ahead and grab a math. And we're going to convert this into only positive numbers, right? So negative 1 to 1 is now going to be 0 and 1. Should give us a nice on off kind of um, signal chain. Let's scoot this down here. Because the next thing we're going to do is filter. So we've got a nice smooth transition. And we'll use that filter to actually drive the cross here. We're going to drag that over here and make a little relative reference. And now we can see that we can very nicely and smoothly transition between our random samples and then back to our um, ordered samples. Whew. Okay, so far, so good. Now, we can we can go ahead and attach that to a null. We can call this null final. And when we back out here, we should see, hopefully, oh, no behavior yet the way that we wanted. Oh, of course, because in our geo we need to assign tx, ty, and tz. Okay, well it looks like we might be like a little bit too close. Voila, we see the whole world uh, swooping around here. Let's go ahead and head over to our view page. Yoink, excuse me, on our camera. And instead of rendering in perspective, let's go ahead and look at this in orthographic and let's set it to 16. And now we should see, aha, that's looking pretty good. You know what, the one thing I think I want us to do here before we forget is let's go ahead and in our instances, let's set our filter to run just a, a little bit slower. Give it like two seconds to transition instead of one. So we should see, oh yeah, there, that's much better. Right, so we're part of the way there already. We ha kind of know that we can see all these pieces uh, moving around. They go from a random location to a predictable sorted location. That's, uh, you know, that's getting there. That's some of what we want it to do. Like, this doesn't have any images on it yet, right? We don't have that like, parsed out the way that we want, just happening uh, quite yet, but that's all right. We can get there. So let's go ahead and let's add another base. And now we can start to think about how we're going to sort out the texture situation here, right? Because we need some textures that are all broken up into this particular kind of arrangement. And how on earth are we going to manage that? All right, well, let's head here into our base. We're going to go ahead and add a table because we need a, a kind of set of rules for how many um, pieces we're going to slice this up into. And we're actually, this particular technique is going to use, uh, it's going to do some texture instancing and we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can uh, specify which order of those is going to happen here, or how we order them, with the uh, instance textures and the texture index. That's actually what we're going to use for this particular technique. Okay. And um, that'll make more sense as we carry on here. Don't worry. I promise. So first things first, let's go ahead and give this some exact dimensions. We only need to have one column, but we do need to specify how many rows here. And I want us to think about using uh, the number of rows that matches 16 times 9, right? Our um, kind of divisions that we have set up, right? We'll remember that we've got 16 by 9 here, and that we want to take advantage of that same um, set of values to help us understand how many of these points we actually need to fill, fill in, right? So if we middle mouse clicked here, we can see there's 144 points. And down here we can see that we've got 144 rows. Now we could use num points just as easily as doing uh, a little bit of math over here. Just an example that we can look at uh, other ways to do this same exact idea, right? Okay. Now we need to do a few other things here. We're going to go ahead and eval. I want to actually be able to grab uh, a number to be associated with these rows, right? So I'm going to use me.input row, and we're going to add one to that. So we can count one to 144. Bada bing, bada boom. That's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and drop a movie file in right here into our network. 
that's great. I'm going to go ahead and specify with a fit because I want to build this so that no matter what media I drop in here, it still behaves correctly. So I'm going to use a fit top. And my fit top, I'm going to do 1280 by 720. That's going to make sure that I match my aspect ratio, which is going to be the really important thing here, no matter what my input image is going to be. OK, we're getting close. We're moving right along. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to a null. I'm going to call it IMG for image. OK, now it would seem like um, this is still a, a bit away from what it is that we want to do. And it is, because what we need to do now is we need to go through this image and we need to cut it up into all the appropriate sections that we need it to live in. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need a couple things in order for that to work. We need to know the uh, index, right? We need to know which slice it is. And then we need to know which portion, in terms of pixel values, right, how we crop this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use a crop. And with our crop, we can actually specify here, right? We can figure out exactly which regions we need to uh, crop out all of our squares. But we need to set up a bunch of the math to make that work. Now, uh, we're going to do that uh, by, well, there are a couple different ways that we could do it. We're going to cheat here uh, today, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this into a base so we can keep this nice and tidy. So we're going to send all these values in. There's going to be some values that come out. Let's dive inside here, and let's think about what it is that we need to do. So not only do I need this index value, which is going to be really important for me, I also need another table. And this table, I want it to have the dimensions that my image has, right? I want it to have 16 by 9, right? So we've got 16 rows, we've got 9 columns. We're mimicking the kind of division that we want to break up with our grid. Okay, now what values do I want to fill this with? Well, I actually i am going to use uh, another table. And we're going to actually put our expression in here and we're going to use an eval. And what I want to do is I want a coordinate system that's going to give me the X and Y position uh, that's going to tell me where the bounds are for each one of my sections. Okay, so what does that look like? That looks like me.inputRow times 80. I'm going to use a comma so that I can have two values in here. Me.inputCall right, my input column times 80. 80 in our case is 80 pixels. So we're going to make 80 pixel squares. That's going to be the size of each one of our rectangles, or each one of our uh, squares. So we can plug these two things together, and now we've got a whole set of coordinates, right, x and y for all of our crop parameters, which is exactly what we want. That is excellent. Now, this is really wonderful. This doesn't do us a whole lot of good in this particular configuration yet, so we've got to rearrange this just slightly. We're going to go ahead and use the select. And in the select, what we're going to do is we are going to um, go ahead and use our column selection. We're going to select by index. And our starting index is going to be me.digit, so my digits minus 1. And my ending index is going to be the same thing, me.digits minus 1. All right, why on earth would I do that, Matt? That doesn't make any sense, right? So first of all, we can see that we're just grabbing the first column, this one right here. Great. Now, if we copy and paste this, because we've used this expression, right, now we're just jumped over one column, which means we can do a little copy, paste, 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 paste and that's it. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we've got all of our data broken out here into a single column. All right. That's 
still seems like it's silly. It is a little bit silly, that's alright. We're going to take all this, we're going to merge it back together. We just took it all apart, why are we putting it all together? Well because now we can append rows, right? So now we can put them all in rows. We should see now that we've got 144 rows of the data that we're after. Okay, that is pretty great news for us. Now we need to do one other thing here. We've got um, all of our kind of informations here in one column and we want to do just like a little quick convert. So we're going to convert that from a table to text and then we're going to convert it again. You're going to say, Matt, why on earth would I do something like that? Well, that's because when we convert back to a table, we're going to take out this slash T and put in just a space. So now we're breaking this every place there's a space in here, which means now we've got X and Y as our crop values as two different columns, which is excellent. We can merge, right? Let's go ahead and grab our index values and our new X, Y values. We'll append columns, and now we've got our index X and Y all in one place. Great. Let's go ahead and we'll insert. And we can go ahead and uh, give our headers. We can put our headers in here. Index, X, Y. Excellent. And let's go ahead and grab our out and take advantage of this thing. So there we have it. We've got our index, X, Y. We've got all of that information prepped for us exactly the way that we want it and need it. So now it's time to do a little bit more fun work, right? Let's go ahead and scooch this over here. Let's attach a null just so we've got it. We're going to go ahead and add another base. It's just that kind of day. It's a base kind of day. We're going to call this master one. Right, and now we're going to dive here inside of our master and we can start the interesting piece of really figuring out what we're going to do. So we're going to select, oops, and we want to select top. So we'll use the select top to go dot dot slash up one and grab image. So we're going to go and grab this thing. Next, we're going to crop. And how are we going to crop? Well, let me tell you. We are going to crop by Let's go ahead and expose all of these parameters here. Oops. Right, that one also. So we're going to go ahead and look for the operator. Right, first we need to find an operator. Dot dot slash. Called null one. That's our null up above. And we want to go ahead and extract from that a row position that's meet up parent dot digits. So I want to grab my parents digits for the row and I want to look in the X column, right? So that starts me at zero. Now I'm going to use that same expression for my right crop. Only in this case, I'm going to add 80 to it. Okay, what gives that does not look right at all? Well, let's go ahead and fix this. Let's change this to pixels instead of fraction. Let's turn our expressions back on. All right, so now we can see that we're starting at zero and we're going to 80. You can believe, better bet your bottom dollar, that we're going to use the same kind of idea here for the bottom, for Y, excuse me. And now we've gone ahead and sliced out a region. Let's go ahead and while we're here, let's add a text top. And what we're going to do here in the text top is we're going to get rid of this bad boy and we're going to specify the dat. We're going to look at is dot dot slash null one. And the row is going to be me dot parent dot digits. And this is going to be useful for us just because it's going to give us a quick way to kind of visually see what on earth is going on. It's going to allow, allow us to actually um, associate numbers with the regions of our slices. And we'll change that here in a little bit, but for right now this gives us a nice way to kind of visualize that to get started. 
Okay, so we can go ahead and give that a number, or excuse me, uh, turn down its font size a little bit. Let's add a null at the end of this, and we'll call this final. And let's back out here, and now it's time to replicate. Whew, we finally got there. We're going to use our null over here as our template table. Let's go ahead and turn up the maximum number of operators for this particular replicator to 200. We don't need quite that many, but that'll make sure that we don't have any problems. With our master, we're going to drop this on here as our master operator, and bada bing, bada boom, we've got a ton of textures. Now, one of the things we probably should have done is we probably should have made this a clone of itself, and let's re-replicate. Wonderful. Now, if we make any changes to our master, it'll push to all of our clones. Whew. Okay, now we're almost there. We're going to back out one more time. Now we're going to come over here to our geo. We're going to look for the textures, right? Our instance textures live inside of, well, let's correct the name here. This is textures. So we look inside of textures, inside of item. We're going to use star to pattern match. So look at everything that has item. And we want to look in that for the thing called final. Okay. Now we're only getting one. What gives? Why is that? Well, we don't have a texture ind index, right? We don't have an index for how we associate textures with this particular arrangement. Okay, well, what do we do to fix that? Let's go ahead and dive here back inside of our instances. Let's add a wave chop. Now we can use this wave chop to go ahead and figure out, uh, to give ourselves a nice a ramped counting value of zero um, all the way up, right? Like there are a couple other ways that we could do this, but this is a fine way and a good way to practice this. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to be a ramp because we definitely want it to be a ramp. We will, uh, over here in channel, we're gonna swap this out to samples. So instead of ending at 599, we're gonna use the operator that's null one and we'll do num samples, num points, excuse me. All right, so we've got 144 points. Now we're going to subtract one from this because we're starting at zero and zero is a number. Let's go ahead and copy this. We can reuse that over here in our amplitude. Let's change our period here to be in samples. Excellent. So we can see here, we, uh, our, the period for this is 144 samples. The amplitude's 143. We start at zero, we go to 143. We could even double check this if we wanted to by using a chop two, and we can see that we've got a nice um, integer count all the way from zero to 143. There are a few rounding errors in there. We're gonna ignore those for right now. It's not gonna give us too much trouble, right? Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's change this from being called Chan1 to being called index. Right, we've got a great name for that now. We're going to go ahead and merge. We'll insert a merge over here. We'll merge this channel right on in. Perfect. And now, now we can really see the magic start. Here in our texture indexes, we can say index is what we want to use. And there we have it. Right now, this is behaving just the way that we want it to. Okay, so that's pretty good, but um, what about a different picture? So let's actually view this. Let's like leave the view up here so we can still see it. And now let's dive here inside of our texture instances. Now remember the way that we set this up, we can go ahead and give this any image that we want and we're actually gonna fit to make sure that we match the correct aspect ratio. We can see it rearrange right back to those images. Now this is really handy to have all about the numbers on here when you're trying to figure out what on earth is going on. Um, but we could just as easily if we wanted to, we could bypass that. And now we don't have that particular feature. Now the next thing you might say to me is you might say, you know what Matt, this is all this is well and good. Um, but I only cross between these two patterns, right? Like these guys never change. So so what gives? How could we how could we change that? Well, there's a number of ways we might think about changing that, and 
the fun way would be to head here inside of instances. And let's take advantage of the fact that we've got this whole situation that's going on, right? Now our sort has got a seed value, right? So we can change how, um, what the seed is, is being used for generating random uh, points. So what if we were to do something, right, that's a little bit more fun and take advantage of the fact that we go from on to off and on, from off to on and on to off. So let's use a chop execute. And in our chop execute, what we're going to do is we're going to look, well, actually what we want to do is we want this particular action to happen when we are in this state, right, when we're here. So we want to look at when we're going on to off. And we could actually we could even bring up our little um, text port here. And in our on to off, let's go ahead and print out, hey there, I am off. Right, just so we can make sure that we can confirm that this is doing what we want it to do. And we should see, hey there, I'm off. Great. Just what we wanted. Okay, so instead of, hey there, I'm off, what do we want it to do? Well, in this case, we want to look for the operator that's called sort1, and we want the parameter called seed, right? That's what we're really after. So let's go ahead and say that the parameter seed is equal to that parameter plus 1. So now we should increment every time we go through here. Okay, get rid of this bad boy. And let's look over here at our sort. We should start at sort. Ooh. Oh, and it's point seed. We used the wrong parameter. Point seed. Point seed. Great. All right, let's see if we got it that time. Oh, no script errors yet. Here we go. There it goes. So we, there's one. We should see now we come back here. It's two, which means we've got a new randomly uh, seated position for these, which means we'll now never see the same configuration of these as we go through. We're changing the seed for that random pattern every time which happens to be pretty cool. That's a great little trick that we can use. And we can also come in here to textures and we can turn off this number situation. So now we've got just this uh, lovely little strangely geodesic abstract kind of pattern that's happening. All right, nice work, everybody. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a look at how we might do this without all of these texture in, um, replicants, right? Like if you don't have a newer NVIDIA card, not GPU, this method isn't going to work for you. So what do we do instead? Well, we've got a solution for that and check back in for the next installment to see how that's going to work.